OK. Oh. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and pick up your homework. And jump over here. So the thing is, is my dogs are not doing our homework, but I left my entire bag at home, which includes my laptop and yeah. my iPad. <clears throat> Thank you. So it has been a rough sort of morning. So I'm going to try to record this using <coughs> something else. Sorry, my girl's coughing, isn't it? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if things uh, seem a little bit different, it's because I'm having something different up here <clears throat> aside from the coffee. Um, let's see if this works. Oh yeah, that works. Okay. Um, so I went ahead and have a few dates for you here. So two weeks from tomorrow, we'll go ahead and plan to have your unit four exam. There's a good chance we're going to get through unit four material before that, and then we'll kind of ease into unit five material, which is gases. So, but um, I have up there, tomorrow's lab will be a series of copper reactions. I'm debating it'll either be copper reactions in which we use the Bunsen burner, and students really kind of like that, just a bunch of, it's like cooking in the, in the chemistry lab. Um, Alternatively, it might be what I call the sodium bicarbonate experiment. It's also in your lab right up too. So we'll do one of those two tomorrow to kind of reinforce what we've been talking about in the lecture. But um, one day, <laughs> we talked a lot about um, uh, chemical reactions. Okay, Again, we use chemical equations to describe the reaction with reactants and form products. And you guys had some um, experience at balancing equations. Some of, some people like them, some people don't. Okay, uh, it's important to come up with kind of the <coughs> overall recipe when you balance the chemical reaction. So today we're going to take off on um, using balanced chemical reactions and doing a sort of um, important chemistry problem called stoichiometry. So it's just a basic. Uh, uh, general chemistry problem called stoichiometry. Now in stoichiometry, or the stoichiometry of a, of a chemical reaction is what you guys did when you were balancing them. The stoichiometry is basically relative amounts of reactants that you need to go to form how much product you're going to form. Remember you guys <coughs> putting that stoichiometric coefficient in front of the reactants and products to kind of kind of show what the, what the story was. And I really liken the stoichiometry of a chemical reaction to kind of the <coughs> recipe of, this, of, the, of the chemical reaction. And so the stoichiometry can only be, um, the story of the stoichiometry can only be told when you have a balanced chemical equation. Remember, that gives you quantitative information. Um, so uh, when you're balancing something like this, and we, yes, this is balanced. Um, we could see, let's see if this will work. We could kind of draw the, um, the line between reactants going to form products, and we could count magnesium and oxygen, and magnesium and oxygen, and this is what we did on Monday. And we would come up with two magnesiums, and we'd come up with two oxygens. And here, remember this strict metric coefficient, which you can change if you're balancing it, gives us two magnesiums and two oxygens. Okay, so with this set of coefficients, I would call it two, one, and two, it is balanced. So we have a balanced, okay. Now, while you're balancing it, you probably, if you're like me, you're thinking of atoms, you're thinking small. Atoms and molecules and formula units. But those stoichiometric coefficients of 2, 1, and 2, they also apply to relative numbers of moles. Moles, that one mole is 6.022 times 10 to 20 or anything. Okay, so we have two moles of magnesium react with one mole of O2 molecules to form two, formula, two moles of formula units, of magnesium oxide formula units. And actually, this idea of going, using those coefficients as moles, to me, that's why you can get a half a mole of O2. We kind of talked about that at the end of lecture on, on Monday. Okay. So um, stoichiometric <clears throat> coefficients, if I have a, uh, a section on your unit 
for exam for like vocabulary, that might be one of the vocabulary words. Okay, stoic cof, stoichiometric coefficients. They are the relative number of particles of reactants and products. Okay. <clears throat> So this kind of fundamental calculation called a stoichiometric calculation in chemistry, we are going to go ahead and kind of play around with balanced, <coughs> balanced equations, balanced chemical equations representing the reaction, and we're going to go from the amount of something to the amount of something else. Now, as I put out my two hands, it kind of looks like we're going to go from the amount of a reactant to the amount of our product, not necessarily. We can do a stoichiometric calculation that kind of backtracks the amount of a product to the amount of a reactant, but you're given the amount of something. That's a stoichiometric calculation. Um, and we do that all the time in cooking. Now, I don't think you guys have this slide, but brownies, who does not want brownies, right? I'm just saying. <laughs> so uh, we could kind of think of this as a, uh, um, this recipe, if you're like me, you're like, now, is it going to make enough? So let's see. Servings. All right, this makes 16 servings. So I'll put on the product side 16 brownies. <clears throat> so that's our product, right? Now I'm not going to write all of the ingredients, but for instance, you see that I have four eggs plus, uh, let's pick on the flour, plus one half cup of flour. So that's your reactants. These are your reactants, and this is your product, right? So here's the deal. If I wanted to scale this up, let's see if I can get a different color. Dun, dun, dun. If I wanted to scale this up, and instead of uh, 16 brownies, if I wanted to make um, 32 brownies, of course, 16 times 2 is 32. How many eggs would I need? Eight, exactly. <clears throat> and I have to scale this up. How many cups of flour? Let's see, times two, one, one cup. Yep, I'm like that. Okay, so in this case, um, this, this is a stoichiometric calculation in which our target is 32 brownies, okay? And we know that <coughs> how much, uh, how many eggs, we need eight eggs then, so four, and then we need one cup of flour. That's a stoichiometric calculation. Um, alternatively, the, uh, that would be, let's see, that would actually be, we know how much we want, how much in, of the ingredients do we need. We could do the other thing too. Like if you go to your, um, your pantry and you find that you have, you have two eggs and you really, really, really want brownies, okay? So if I only have two eggs, okay, um, two divided by two, uh, excuse me, two is four divided by two. So then I would have to, how many brownies can I make? I could only make exactly eight brownies. In that case, the driving force or my stoichiometric calculation started out with eggs and how many brownies can I make? That's a stoichiometric calculation. So let's kind of scale that up. Um, to um, actually that magnesium reacting with oxygen problem. But before we do that, you kind of shop, so sh I kind of, you saw me do like a times two and a divided by two, or just kind of on the fly like that. Well, we have to use, we have to be a little more organized about it. And we actually are going to use the amounts that are given in the balance equation. <coughs> we are going to use those amounts to come up with <coughs> what we call stoichiometric ratios, okay? stoichiometric ratios. And which ratio you choose depends upon what you know and what you're trying to get to. So I'll kind of show you how that works. So if we go back to this magnesium reacting with oxygen to form magnesium oxide, this is balanced with coefficients of 2, 1, and 2 respectively. Now depending upon which two things we were doing a calculation between. So for instance, if we were doing a calculation between magnesium and oxygen, magnesium and oxygen, well, we could say, those are, those are like two ingredients, right? Those are two reactants. We could say that you need two moles of magnesium for every one mole of oxygen. We could do the flipped version of that. 
These are going to be stoichiometric ratios we can use in our calculation. We can also say that um, one mole of oxygen will react with two moles of magnesium. If we were wanted to pick on something else, if we wanted to pick on magnesium and the product, magnesium oxide, we could say that two moles of magnesium are required to form two moles of magnesium oxide. Sometimes students will say, oh, Mrs. Snipes, can I take those two and have them cancel and make one? You can, but you kind of lose a little bit of it in the first one. We could also say if we needed the flip version of that ratio. The last thing is if we were going to kind of compare, do a stoichiometric calculation between oxygen and magnesium oxide. We could say one mole of oxygen will form two moles of magnesium oxide. Um, two moles of magnesium oxide will be formed by one mole of, of O2. Um, so if you want to, I kind of, sometimes I lose track of which is which, but if we put an A, B, a C, a D, an E, and an F, okay? Notice that A and B are related, C and D are related, E and F are related. So let's kind of look at a first stoichiometric calculation. Now, these stoichiometric calculations, and we do have some homework related to these, are what I call the baby stoichiometric calculations. They're what I call moles to moles. And we'll need to expand that here in a minute to the normal stoichiometric calculation. But here it says how many moles, and sometimes I'll write that over the, um, like I'll have the balanced equation up there and I'll kind of write over it. Um, what I know about it. So, for instance, um, how many moles of O of oxygen? How many moles of O2? So I'll find my O2 and I'll write under O2, I'll write question mark moles. How many moles of O2 are needed to react with 0.245 moles of magnesium? So I'll find my magnesium and I'll write 0.245 moles. Okay. So in this case, we're, at, we're kind of focusing on two ingredients. And we're going to use as our tool the fact that we know that two moles of magnesium will react with one mole of oxygen to kind of scale that. And then we're going to do one more problem. I'll switch my color here. Um, and I just think if you already have the balanced <laughs> equation, it just is kind of handy. Um, for this one is how many moles of magnesium, so magnesium, question mark, moles of magnesium, excuse me, magnesium oxide, how many moles of magnesium oxide can be produced? Now, I probably should change this, and it should say, if you want to add it, from um, 0 0.245 moles of magnesium. And I'm going to explain this later with excess oxygen. <clears throat> I'll explain what excess means later. It just means you went to your cupboard and you had all sorts of O2, but magnesium, just the right amount. Okay. So um, how many moles of magnesium can be produced? And uh, over here, I'm going to put under um, magnesium oxide, excuse me, how many moles of magnesium oxide can be produced in blue here? Um, again, with the uh, 0.245 <coughs> moles of magnesium. So it's like a recipe thing. Okay. Um, so I'm going to kind of do like a flow chart kind of from left to right of how we can work this problem. I think of working this problem. <clears throat> we are given moles of magnesium, okay, and we want to get in this case to the first problem to moles of uh, magnesium oxide, <clears throat> excuse me, moles of oxygen, okay. So um, if you look back at your A and B, <coughs> those are the ones we're going to use, right? If you look back, we're at A, B, C, D, and E, F. We're going to use A and B, but we're going to want, our first term is going to be the moles of magnesium, and we want moles of magnesium to cancel. So can you see where actually it's going to be? looks like, how many people think it's going to be A? I feel it's going to be B. I do think it's going to be B, exactly. You got it. So to accomplish that, it's just going to be, like I said, this is kind of the middle part of an ordinary <laughs> stoichiometric calculation where you're just going from moles to moles. Not too bad. Um, and then the second one, uh, of course, we're going to use 
Is that C and D? Oh, yeah, we're going to use C and D. So in this case, we again want moles of magnesium to cancel. So how many people think we're going to use C? <coughs> how many people think we're going to use D? Me too. Exactly. <coughs> you got it. So that's going to be our fraction, our ratio that's actually going to be inserted after the moles of magnesium. And so it looks like this. It's all about factor label having your units cancel. Right. So the term we're going to start with was what was given in the problem. In this case, moles of magnesium will be given. Now notice that we have to be what's called explicit. You can't just leave it 0.245 moles because, goodness, you got <coughs> moles of all sorts of things. So I would put that over 1. And then the next term is going to be, we decided, B. In order to get units of moles of magnesium to cancel, okay, we're going to put units in the bottom, and then units of moles of oxygen, because that's our target, <coughs> in the top. And this is where sometimes I tell students, I actually, I put the units first, and then I go up and get this number. Now, this number two, hopefully you're okay, that it came from this number right here. So your two came from your stoichiometric coefficient. And this number right here, the one in front of one mole of O2, came from the one right here. That's implied in the balanced equation. So yeah, not too bad. So basically a half of 0.245. Now we need to round according to three significant figures. <coughs> So actually, you should get our beautiful number 0.123 moles of O2. And that's it. Again, and this is a little simpler than your ordinary, your normal stoichiometric calculation. But can you see where it's a stoichiometric calculation? You're going from the amount of something, in this case, moles of magnesium, to the amount of something else, which in this case, is moles of the other reactant. All right, let's knock out the other one. So for the other one, our starting term is also going to be 0.245 moles of magnesium over 1. And we decided we were going with D here. So we want moles of magnesium to cancel. Well, we want to be left with moles of magnesium oxide. But just so we're all, all on the same page here, Again, this two came from this two up here. That two in front of the two moles of magnesium came from the balanced equation. And this <coughs> two right here in front of the moles of magnesium oxide came from this two right here in front of the coefficient from uh, magnesium oxide. So I can do that math. If we're down to three significant figures, you get the same number, right? 0.245 moles of of magnesium oxide. That's it. <clears throat> Cooking with chemistry. So can I borrow somebody's, remember I said I left the whole iPad at home. Can I borrow your, <clears throat> should I disinfect it? <laughs> no, I have a Okay. <laughs> what does that say? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So 17, 29, and 30. Let's see what we got. I don't get any new markers. Okay. <laughs> so 17 says um, it gives this equation. We got time. And it goes ahead and it balances for you. It says 2N2O5 gas. That's one reactant goes to four, four and O2s, gases, and one O2 gas. So we, it's balanced, that's wonderful. And then for instance, it, it asks you for some quantities. Um, let's just do the first one. So they're all a little bit different, but A says, oh, for all of them, they're all a little bit different, but for all of them, you're supposed to come up with the moles of NO2 that are formed. So for A, it says, what if you, just for kicks, had 1.3 moles, I'll go ahead and put it under your N2O5. 
1.3 moles of N2O5, question mark, moles of NO2. Okay. So in this case, my first term, if we want to just go ahead and knock it out that way, is going to be 1.3 moles of N2O5 over 1. <coughs> And sometimes you see where actually I went ahead and I have a ratio. I have a line here, a divisor here. So, and I'll go ahead and put moles of NO2 there. So to fill these in, notice I want moles of N2O5 to cancel. <clears throat> and I want to be left, I'm just working on units here. I want to be left with moles of NO2. So with those numbers all in place, what number goes here in the top, moles of NO2? Four. Four. And why is that? That is right. Very good. So what number goes down here? Two. Does that make sense? Yeah. I like it. And then 29, so that was 17. 29, let's see. <clears throat> not going to cut it. 29 is very similar, but 29, you're, when you read it, you're going to have to balance it first. You guys can check. <clears throat> and then 30, <clears throat> it's similar too. Okay? Any questions about that? So I'm going to go on and kind of take that. Note. Or should we just. Yeah, we'll just stop right there. This will be. This is a good stopping place, and then um, because we'll take a running start at it on Friday. But like I said, work those problems and keep all that in mind, and that will hopefully solidify <coughs> what we need to do on Friday. Perfect. Well, sort of. Thank <laughs> you.